Hello everyone, welcome back to the Ginger Joe Racing Show, proudly sponsored by betting.co.uk and I'm just back with uh, two selections for you for Thursday's racing over at Warwick. We've got a pretty decent day's worth of jumps action and I've got two selections that I think could be worth a little bit of a punt as singles only. Now, before I go on to those selections, though, just a quick recap of the four selections that I did put up for Wednesday. We had a pretty decent day of it in the end. I did mention in my episode yesterday that the four selections I was putting up as singles only, the idea was that we backed them all to the stake and plan, and then we'll come out with a profit at the end of the day. And that did happen. We laid out six points, and I managed to get nine points back. So we were three points profit. And the point system is something that's going to be in place now moving forward as I do for my group as well. And if you'd like to come over and join the group chat, there is actually a link in the description below. I pointed out that we had uh, two selections that I couldn't really split for the nap selection. They both duly got the job done. That was Gamby T8 who won for us at 3-1. to one. I mentioned yesterday with him that the drop back in trip and just letting him bowl along from his key nature was going to help him. He's a very good jumper and he really did get the job done in a good fashion under Bo Morgan. And the other nap selection was actually the act of authority in the 505. I put him up yesterday at 6-4. to four. He ended up winning by 14 lengths at odds on. But again, two pretty decent winners winners for us there. 6-4 and 3-1. to one. That gave us a nice bit of profit for the day. Now, also, one of the selections was Drumley Spud at 9-4. to four. Now, she actually started to look tailed off at one point during the race, but she made up loads of ground in the final furlong and ended up only going down by a neck. So that one was a little bit unfortunate, whilst Morricone, the horse that came over from Ireland, showed pretty much nothing whatsoever. But it was a nice profitable day nonetheless. Three points again in profit. And it just adds to the profitable month so far as well. Now, I do have a profit and loss sheet available as well if you come over and join the group chat. And there is a link in the description below for you to come over and join us there. But now moving forward, as I do for the group chat, I will be giving you a point um, premises and point selection for the tips that I do give up. So you can understand the strength that I feel um, worthy for these uh, selections in particular. Okay, so I'm going to go on to the two selections for tomorrow. And my first selection comes in the 335 at Warwick. We've got a handicap hurdle over two mile five furlongs on good ground. And the favourite in here is Move It Like Mini for Nigel Twiston Davis and Finn Lambert taking off five pounds, which is definitely going to be quite significant towards his chances. Now, very nice horse this one as well. And the Twiston Davis team are very much in form at the moment. So it does have... Uh, definitely have some obvious claims for this race but the one I'm going to side with is a horse that nearly made my tend to follow from the Ben Paul and team owned by the Megsons and that is a gentleman valley done really well winning three of his last four starts and the two most previous uh, two most recent of those came at Worcester and Market Raisin where he definitely seemed to act better on the good ground now the time before he did actually win here at Warwick over a lot further but again the good to soft ground wasn't necessarily a problem I just feel like he acts a little bit better on the good service dropping back is not going to be a problem at all he was thriving last year and considering that he looked a little bit of a tricky customer in his early days he's a seven-year-old now he definitely seemed to improve as he went through the last season and again he's won three of his last four starts so he's still on the up the shorter trip shouldn't be a problem for him he jumps and travels plenty well enough and either over the even over the longer trip it showed a real nice turn of foot so he's got plenty of speed about him as well so gentleman value 11 to 2 in the 335 i think is worth a bet at um 11 to 2 1.5 win on him there now in the race after the 405 just a one point selection in this race and it's a horse that's actually um stung me for a few quid before by beating a few of my selections and that's a horse called opening bid for chris down now he's definitely got no problems over this trip he's won over this course as well he's won over this distance and I think he's definitely going to be the one that takes all the beating in this race. I understand why we've got Inch House here as the 13-8 to favourite. He's likely to improve. He's got 
plenty of unexposed form still to build on. However, I quite like the fitness edge of opening bid. He's definitely no mug. And if Inchouse is to beat opening bid, he's going to have to be a pretty decent horse. So I think on this occasion, I will side with opening bid, despite thinking that Inchouse will turn out to be the best horse come the end of the season. So he is 5-2 to two now, but when I put him up in my group, he was 11-4, to four, and that's a one-point win on opening bid. So just two selections for Thursday. It's Gentleman Valley in the 3.35 at 11 to 2 as a 1.5 win. And then in the 4.05, I have open and bid a 1 point win at 11 to 4. Two selections for you for Thursday. Hopefully it's another profitable day for us on the channel. And as I said, if you'd like to come over and join the group chat, there's a link in the description for you below. See you everyone. Uh, and I'll be back again tomorrow with some more selections for Friday's action. Bye for now.